Microsoft Desktop Virtualization Technologies Part 2, the one with MedV, AppV, and Remote Desktop Services. Good morning, and welcome to this webcast about Microsoft Desktop Virtualization Technologies, RDS, AppV, MedV, USV, and VDI. My name is Anna Kristen, and I'll be the English dubber for this presentation made by Fabrizio Volpe, Microsoft MVP on Directory Services. This second part will be about MedV, AppV, and Remote Desktop Terminal Services. MedV 2.0 is based on the Workspace Packager that converts a Windows XP Service Pack 3 image into a Workspace Package. From now on, when the user requires an application that cannot work in a Windows 7 environment, the XP system is used in a transparent manner. On the user's client, we'll have an agent to manage the communication with the aforementioned package. MedV works also with Internet Explorer redirections, so if we add a site in the MedV policies, every time a user tries to open this site, he'll use the version of Internet Explorer that's in Windows XP. The MedV workflow is the following. The administrator prepares an XP image using Virtual PC. Then all the required software is installed and the security settings are deployed. At the end of the workflow, we use SysPrep and we run the workspace packager that transforms the image into a software workspace package. The aforementioned package is something we're able to deploy to the clients. From the packager, we are also able to change the policies related to the use of the workspace package. We have a demo related to the creation of a package. We are asked for a path to save the resulting files and a path to find the original Windows XP image. Please note, there is a guide that's important to follow related to the image preparation, available also in the ISO image of the tools, because the VHD file we're going to use for MedV requires a list of patches and modifications to work as we need. We have to select how the package will work the first time we use it, because the last preparation step we had before Packager was a sysprep, so for the first run we have to insert information like computer name, administrator password, and so on. We are able to deploy a single package for all the users on a computer, or to deploy different packages for different users, for example if we need a set of applications that changes from user to user. Then we have a series of conditions related to regional settings, networking, since we're talking about a virtual machine, and so on. MedV 2.0 has a set of features, such as USB redirection, that are really interesting in an enterprise environment. Now let's talk about AppV, which is a way to create a package from a single application. The idea is to enable two software versions that are not compatible to work together in the same environment. As you can see, we have a screen capture here of Office 2003 and Office 2007 running side by side. We start from a client that will use what we call the sequencer, whose focus is on the recording of all the steps and changes related to a software installation. Sequencer will keep track of all the registry modifications, all the required DLLs, and so on during the setup phase of a software. The last step of the sequencer is related to customization and personal settings if we want to have them in the application package we're going to deploy. The application package will be delivered to the users through an agent. The application will run only in the memory of the client and that's why we are able to keep different versions in the same Windows installation. The AppV system architecture is composed of the following components. The AppV application server, which hosts virtualized application packages and streams them to the client computers. The Microsoft Application Virtualization Client for Windows Desktops of MDOP, or Microsoft Application Virtualization Client for Remote Session Hosts, i.e. Terminal Services, which are generally called the AppV Client. The AppV Management Console, the management tool to set up, administer, and manage AppV servers. The AppV Sequencer, a tool for preparing applications for virtualization. A minimum deployment of AppV, also called standalone, is made up by a sequencer and an AppV client. In the application package, we'll also have an MSI file that enables us to deploy the AppV package even if we have no deployment infrastructure, for example if we're working in a workgroup with a limited number of computers. 
To minimize possible errors, it's important to use for the sequencer a client that's as similar as possible to the ones where we'll deploy the final packages. We'll see in the demo how the sequencer works. We're going to create an application package for Firefox browser using the default settings. The sequencer will create a virtual root, Q, and it's important to have this letter free also on the destination client. The bigger the software we're going to install, the longer time will be required by the sequencer that will record the modifications to the system at the end of the deployment. If we go to open the queue disk, we'll see a list of folders containing all the required files, icons, and so on to make the software run on another client. The manifest XML file will contain all the information related to the specific package. To complete the demo, we'll use a virtual machine because, as we said, we need an installed OS as similar as possible to the original one to have a lower number of possible errors. In our example, the original machine was an x86 virtual machine and the destination machine is an x86 virtual machine. We'll have to mount the DVD image of MDOP, Microsoft Desktop Optimization Package, to deploy the AppV client. In our scenario, we'll go with a typical standalone infrastructure. In MDOP, we have a lot of additional software that enables us to design an infrastructure quite more complex than the standalone we're using. A slightly more complex infrastructure is the streaming, lightweight model, where we have no Active Directory, no management server, and no SQL server for permissions management. We'll go with ACLs. The main advantage of this model is the capability to deploy also to remote clients with a limited data bandwidth. A complete and more complex infrastructure is the full infrastructure model that includes the system center, management server, active directory, and SQL server. This is a model that enables AppV on an enterprise made up by hundreds of clients. AppV has performances that are very similar to the standard application, and usually we have no need for software or hardware upgrades. AppV sequencing has some limitations. A. Not all the applications are available for sequencing and B, only desktop applications are supported. We have around 70% of applications that are very easy to sequence, around 20% requiring additional customization, and around 10% of applications that are not possible to sequence, for example, VPN clients, antivirus software, and so on. Back to the AppV demo. After the client installation, we'll launch the MSI file. Again, we're in a standalone scenario. We'll run the AppV setup of Foxit that will enable the application on our client, adding also an icon on our desktop. If we go into the control panel and we check the installed software, we'll see Foxit with the author published, so this is not really installed. One last thing about AppV, there is also a client version that's dedicated to terminal servers or remote desktop servers, so AppV packages are available also to a remotized environment. From Windows 2008 to Windows 2008 R2, what we knew as terminal services has been transformed into remote desktop services, and that involves also having quite a few new features. A whole new role is the remote desktop virtual host and the remote app. A terminal RDS server is a single machine with all the required software installed that enables users to connect and to work side by side with no interaction between one user session and the others. Every single user will have his memory and disk space like it was in the host environment some time ago. We could say that we are deploying a central host server with a GUI. Patches, software updates, and all the software lifecycle activities are centralized on the terminal server giving the users only an instance to work on. Remote desktop server roles will include a mandatory remote desktop session host. Users can connect to the RD session host servers in a session collection to run programs, save files, and use resources on those servers. An optional remote desktop web access that enables users to access remote app and desktop connection through the start menu or through a web browser. 
In the demo, we'll see remote desktop web access exposed on the Internet. In this scenario, we are able to show applications on a portal, and with Windows 2008 R2, we have the additional capability to show every single user only the applications he's enabled to use. If I want, I have the ability to deploy the session host and the web access on a single server. We have seen the possibility of giving access to the users through a remote desktop client or via a web interface. A third solution is to publish software icons in the Programs menu and on the desktop and, again, they will be only a connection to the RDS environment. The appearance, for example, of Outlook deployed using RDS on the client will be the same that we have on a workstation with a local office installation, including taskbar icons, messages, notifications, and so on. The protocol I'll use is RDP, which grants compression and security on data. Other roles related to RDS include remote desktop gateway used to expose the service to the Internet, for example, putting the gateway in a DMZ. I could pair with the gateway in NPS, Network Policy Server, to check the requiring client for compliance with my company's rules on antivirus software, patches, and so on. Remote Desktop Connection Broker allows users to reconnect to their existing virtual desktop, remote app programs, and session-based desktops. It enables even load distribution across RD session. The redirection could be used also to load balance the workload on a per single application base. Remote Desktop Virtualization Host is a Hyper-V deployment to enable users to connect to virtual desktops by using remote app and desktop connection. As we said before, we have a list of new features related to RDS. The idea is to give the user an experience that's as similar as possible to the use of a personal and or physical workstation.